Hey there, gang. In this next unit, we're finally going to move away from the study of triangles to the study of quadrilaterals. However, in this first video, we'll be focusing on all sorts of polygons. Remember, polygons are simply closed figures formed by three or more sides. And so um, you can see down here in this chart, which we'll fill out in a moment, um, the different types of polygons uh, that we have. Uh, we've been talking about triangles for quite a while, which is a three-sided polygon. A four-sided polygon is a quadrilateral, and then we have five-sided, six-sided, seven-sided, etc., uh, which we'll look at here in a moment. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to focus on uh, is what's called uh, the interior angles sum. And that says that the sum of the degrees in any polygon can be determined by the number of triangles that can be drawn within the polygon. So what we're going to do below is fill out this um, table and look for a pattern so that we can find the sum of the degrees of the interior angles within any polygon. So let's start with uh, the polygons we've been talking about for a while now, triangles. Triangles, of course, have three sides. And you can draw one triangle inside of a triangle. Uh, and we know already from our study of triangles that the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees. Next, let's talk about quadrilaterals. So here I have a rectangle drawn, but this applies to any quadrilateral uh, that we can use. So parallelograms, um, squares, etc. The number of sides of a quadrilateral is 4. The number of triangles you can draw inside of a quadrilateral is two. We have one triangle drawn here and another triangle drawn here. Well, what would the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral be? Well, remember a triangle has a sum of 180 degrees for its interior angles. So if there are two triangles, then the sum of the interior angles would be 300 60 degrees. Next, we have five-sided polygons, which are known as pentagons. You can see from the diagram that a pentagon can have three triangles drawn inside it. And if there are three triangles drawn inside a pentagon, then the pentagon must have 540 degrees for its sum of interior angles. A hexagon is a six-sided polygon. From the diagram, you can see that there are four triangles drawn inside a hexagon. And so if there are four triangles, that means the sum of the interior angles is 720 degrees. We can continue this pattern throughout the table. A heptagon has seven sides, an octagon has eight sides, a nonagon has nine sides, and a decagon has ten sides. And the number of triangles in each of those different types of polygons would be five, six, seven, and eight, respectively. So the sum of the interior angles would be 900 degrees, 1,080 degrees, 1,260 degrees, 1,440 degrees. So, you, I want you to ask yourself now, do you notice any patterns as you look throughout this table? Hopefully, one pattern that you notice is that the number of triangles that can be drawn is always two less than the number of sides. For instance, when we have a three-sided polygon, a triangle, we can only draw one triangle. When we have four sides, a quadrilateral, we can draw two triangles. When we have eight sides, an octagon, we can draw six triangles. So if you subtract two from the number of sides, you get the number of triangles that can be drawn. And the number of triangles that can be drawn, <clears throat> we always take that number times 180 degrees to get the sum of the interior angles. So we can come up with a formula to find the sum of the interior angles in any polygon. 
And that formula is this. S, which stands for the sum of the interior angles, is equal to the quantity N, which is the number of sides, minus 2 times 180. That formula will tell you the sum of the interior angles for any polygon. So that formula is focused on the sum of the interior angles. This next formula, I want to focus on a single interior angle of a regular polygon. A regular polygon is one in which all sides are equal, so therefore all of the angles are equal. So this formula only works when all of the sides and all of the angles are equal. To find the measure of a single interior angle in a regular polygon, we use this formula. The sum of the interior angles, S, divided by the number of sides, N. So let's practice using these two formulas in some examples uh, on the next page. So this first example asks us to find the sum of the interior angles of a 15-gon. So yes, when we get to a certain point uh, in the number of sides of polygons, we literally name them by the number of sides. So a polygon with 15 sides is just called a 15-gon. Uh, so the sum of the interior angles formula, remember, is S equals the quantity N minus 2 times 180. Here we have 15 sides, so this is going to be 15 minus 2 times 180. I know that 15 minus 2 is 13, and 13 times 180 is 2,340. So 2,340, remember to put degrees on here. Number two, find the sum of the interior angles of a 21-gon. So this is a polygon with 21 sides. So we'll take 21 minus 2, which is 19, times 180. 19 times 180 is 3,420. Example three, what is the measure of each interior angle of a regular pentagon? So the first thing that we need to do is find the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon. And so that would be S equals, there are five sides in a pentagon. So that's five minus two, that quantity times 180. So that would be three times 180, which is 540. Then to find a single uh, angle measure, since it's a regular pentagon, I can take 540 divided by 5, and that is equal to 108 degrees. Number four, what is the measure of each interior, interior angle of a regular 18-gon? So first I need to find the sum of all of the interior angles, so that's going to be the quantity of 18 minus 2, or 16, times 180. 16 times 180 is 2,880. To find the measure of one angle, 2,880 divided by 18 is 160 degrees. Okay, so that's interior angles. Now we're going to talk about exterior angles. Exterior angles are always supplementary to their adjacent interior angles. So we're going to take a look at four polygons below, um, and we're going to find the measure of each exterior angle along with the sum of all of the exterior angles. So here I have a triangle. Um, the interior angles are 79, 61, and 40 degrees. To find the exterior angles, which I've extended the sides of the triangle so you can more clearly see those, 
uh, we just need to subtract each of the interior angles from 180 because, again, it says exterior angles are supplementary to their adjacent interior angles. So our first exterior angle is here, um, and it's going to be 101 degrees because 101 plus 79 is 180. Our next one is here, uh, 119 degrees, and our last one is here. 140 degrees. So if I add up those three exterior angles, I get 360 degrees. So that's for a triangle. For a quadrilateral, I just have a quadrilateral here uh, with these interior angles. Let's try this. So uh, this exterior angle up here would be 56 degrees. Uh, this one on the top right would be 104 degrees. On the bottom right, this would be 91 degrees, and on the bottom left, 109 degrees. If I add up all of those exterior angles, I again get 360 degrees. Let's do that for a pentagon now. So my exterior angles would be 82 degrees, 59 degrees, 93 degrees, 50 degrees and 76 degrees. If I add all of those up, I get, again, 360 degrees. Finally, for a hexagon, I have 51 degrees, 56 degrees, 68 degrees, 57 degrees, 63 degrees, and 65 degrees. Add all of those exterior angles together, and we get 360 degrees. So I could keep going, but I think after four polygons, uh, you get the point here. Uh, the sum of the exterior angles of any polygon is 360 degrees. So we have a formula to find the sum of the interior angles, but the sum of the exterior angles will always be 360 degrees, no matter what the polygon is. So for number five, what is the measure of each exterior angle of a regular hexagon? Well, I know the sum of the exterior angles is going to be 360. So I can just divide that by uh, the number of sides on a hexagon, which is 6. And so that would be 60 degrees. Number 6, what is the measure of each exterior angle of a regular 24 gon? Again, 360 is the sum. Divide that by 24, and we get 15 degrees. Number seven, if the exterior angle of a regular polygon measures 12 degrees, how many sides does the polygon have? So here, we have to set up an equation to find the number of sides. So I know that 360 divided by the number of sides, which I'll just call x here, since I don't know that, is going to be equal to 12. And so if I just uh, do some algebra here, I get 360 equals 12x. I can multiply both sides by x. And so therefore, x is equal to 30. So 30 sides. And the same thing for number eight. If the exterior angle um, of a regular polygon measures 40 degrees, how many sides does it have? So 360 divided by x equals 40. So that means that 40 times x is 360, and x is 9. So that would be a nonagon, nine sides. All right, so now just some general uh, practice questions. Uh, number nine, 
five angles of a hexagon measure 119 degrees, 129 degrees, 104 degrees, 139 degrees, and 95 degrees. We need to find the measure of the sixth angle. So in order to do this, I first need to know what is the sum of the interior angles in a hexagon. And so that's my formula. S equals the number of sides for a hexagon. That's 6 minus 2. That quantity times 180. So that's 4 times 180, which is 720 degrees. Since that's the sum of all of the angle measures, then I can add up... Uh, my angle measures. So I have 119 plus 129 plus 104 plus 139 plus 95. I need to find my sixth angle, so I'll call that x. They all have to add to get 720 degrees. So if I add the first five, I end up with 586 degrees. 586 plus x is equal to 720, and 720 minus 586 is 134. So that sixth angle is 134 degrees. Number 10, the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 3,960 degrees. How many sides does the polygon have? So since I know the sum, I'm going to use my um, sum of interior angles formula, and I'll put in 3,960 for S. I don't know the number of sides. Remember, that's my N in that formula, so this will be the quantity N minus 2 times 180 equals 3,960. Well, I can divide both sides of this equation by 180, and that gives me 22 equals the quantity n minus 2. And then if I solve that for n, I get n equals 24. So this would be 24 sides. All right, the remaining four examples here, um, I would like you to try on your own, and then we'll check them in class the next time I see you. So again, 11 through 14, try those on your own, and we'll check those the next time I see you. Until then, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.